to be. One dear heart near to be. Penny! Soon one dear heart near to be. Penny! Come in, Captain Drummond. You rang, so? Yes, I rang. Now, why didn't you come the first time I called? Because the cook is deaf, so. Are we playing a game, Tenny? No, sir. Then riddle me the reason you didn't come, because Cook is deaf. Because if she were not deaf, sir, she would have heard you. And if she had heard you, she would have called me. And if she had called you, you would have heard her, I would have heard her, and I would have come to you, sir. Uh, you win, Tenny. What, sir? Now, where were we? If you mean where would I, sir, I was outside with the corpse later. The fog is very thick, and you're afraid that Colonel Nielsen and Miss uh, Clavering wouldn't see them. See them? The gates, sir. Oh, well, you'll let them, of course. The gates, sir. And now, Tenny, the lantern's on the gates. Oh, yes. Well, now that we're out of the fog, let's see if you can help me. Here goes. Tenny, I have written a poem. Not really, sir. Yes, really. Here, read this. They will. The first letters of each line taken in order spell a young lady's name. P H Y L L I S. Phyllis. Oh, go ahead, read it. I am so. Aloud. Perhaps you'll know when this you see how much, my dear, you mean to me. You brought new joy into my days. Love has me kept. Cured in its maze, long seem the hours through which I gaze into the years when we are married soon one dear heart near to be blank. Well, it's a bit on the feathery side, don't you think so? The feathery side? Oh, definitely. Oh, Tenny, I want help, not criticism. Tenny, what rhymes with married? 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 Harried, sir. Oh, no, 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 Tenny. Harried doesn't go with married. You speak with the voice of inexperience, sir. You don't like the idea of my getting married, do you, Tenny? May I speak freely, sir? Of course. No, sir, I do not. But why, Tenny? Why? I want to be married. There's an old saying, marry in haste and repent at leisure, sir. Ah, but Phyllis, uh, Miss Clavering is different, Tenny. She is <coughs> probably at the door, sir. Shall I answer it? No, Tenny. I shall answer. Yeah, hold this. Darling. You. Uh, just a moment, young fellow. Hello, Colonel. I have your favorite cheese souffle just as you ordered. Good. Try and hold it for me. I've got to meet the 7 o'clock express. There's some important papers from the yard. Now, what's up at Scotland Yard? A nice juicy murder? No. But now that you're back in England, anything can happen and probably will. <laughs> Not this time, Inspector. And I hope you're right. And don't call me Inspector. Right to our Colonel. Do you like tea souffle? Do you? I hate it. So do I. Thank heaven. Good evening, Penny. Uh, Good evening, Miss Clavering. Shall I uh, destroy this song? No, Tenny. Well, you may take Miss Clavering's rap. Sit down, Alan. Oh, for me. Why, Hugh, it's an acrostic. I spent the better part of two hours on it. Perhaps you'll know when this you see how much, my dear, you mean to me. Well, that's sweet. You really like it? Of course I do. You brought new joy into my day. Love has me captured in its maze. Darling, I'm so completely lost. I hope I never find my way out. Long seem the hours through which I gaze into the years when we are married. Soon one, dear heart, near to be. Uh, yes. 
What rhymes with married? Harriet. Oh, that's what Tenny said. Tenny doesn't like me. Oh, you mustn't mind him, though. But you're very fond of Tenny, and... Pardon me. Hello? Hello, Hugh. Are you there? I hope so, Aldi. Are you? Somebody must have spilled a box of tacks on the road near Five Oaks Inn, and all my cars have gone flat. Drift down for me, will you? Right you are. Here's your change, sir. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Here's a bob for you, my girl. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but you see, I was in a... Hey, hurry. Yes, Michel Valdin, at your service. I could not help but overhear your difficulty with the tax. And as my way takes me to Captain Roman's very gates, may I suggest that I accommodate you in that direction? Oh, that's awfully decent of you and all that. Uh, but if I didn't wait for you... Yes, of course, I understand. But you see, uh, I insist that you permit me this slight favor. But I say, you can't do this to Quiet. me. Quiet. But my baby's being christened in the morning. And if I don't go... Yes, the smile for the pretty little barmaid. <laughs> so you want to come along? No, I'll try to think of something to rhyme with married. Think about this. Back in a little while. Hold it over, No, thank you. Oh, Tenny. Yes, please. Why don't you want Captain Drummond to marry me? Uh, you see, Miss, Captain Drummond leads an adventuresome sort of life. And I rather doubt that you would fit in, if you will forgive my saying so. Is that all you have against me, Tenny? You see, Miss, Captain Drummond is rather like a son to me. And I don't want to see him make a mistake. And because he proposed marriage an hour after he met me, you feel he might be making one. Love at first sight is rather like a mule, Miss Levering. It kicks backwards. Suppose I were to tell you that Captain Drummond is the first and only man I've ever cared for. And that I love him deeply and with all my heart. Would that make any difference? I rather think it would, Miss. Then that's the way it is, really. That makes me happier. Good. Tenny. Yes, miss. Captain Drummond really likes this adventuresome life you mentioned. If I may use the term, miss, it's the captain's wine. You like it too? Well, it sort of runs in the family, miss. Don't you think there's much to be said in favor of home and fireside? Mm, the uh, thought had never occurred to me, but it is an idea. Well, I for one hope that after we're married, we can all settle down to peace and quiet. <coughs> probably Colonel Nielsen. This is Rockingham Lodge. Captain Drummond's residence. Yes, please. Can you bring my bag, please? Quiet, please. Pay no attention. Did you hear what the man with the glasses said? No, sir, but it was ever so nice and friendly like. Because when your friend went away, he smiled at me, and he gave me a bob, he did. He left no message for me? No, sir, he just went. Oh, well, there's another bob for you. Oh, thank you. Rockingham Lodge, hurry, please. Operator! Operator! Phyllis! Tenny! Captain Drummond? Who are you? You are Captain Drummond? Where is Miss Clavering? May I suggest that you stay where you are, please? Thank you. I am Michael Valdin. You do not know me. One year ago, my brother-in-law died on the gallows. You were responsible. I could kill you now, Captain Drummond, and settle our score. But I will not let you off with one bullet. No, that would be too easy. Too easy for you and Miss Clavering. Where is she? Became necessary for her to leave quite suddenly. Ah, she wouldn't do that. On the contrary, she went quite willingly. When informed of 
of the condition. What conditions? You may find out later, that is, if you are clever. I am here only to impress upon you the necessity, shall we say the most vital necessity, of doing exactly what you are told. And what am I supposed to do? Remain here until you are told to leave. Do not notify the police. And I warn you particularly not to bring your friend, Colonel Nielsen, into this. If you do, Miss Clavering will be killed immediately. We understand one another, do we not? Yes. And now, Captain Drummond, until we meet again, you are clever. Phyllis is gone. Go gone where? I don't know. You don't know? I haven't the remotest idea. Confounded Drummond. How is it that whenever I see you, someone has either been murdered or disappears? Come on. Tell me about it. I can't. What do you mean you can't? You're Scotland Yard. I can't bring the police into it. I'm more than Scotland Yard. I'm your friend. If there's anything wrong, I want to know it. Oh, I can't tell you, Colonel. Thanks just the same. Don't think I'm being rude, but... You want me to leave? Please. Then I won't leave. But, Colonel... No. Captain Drummond! Captain Drummond! Tell him! Have not think what's happened. <laughs> Here, sit down. Here. Where's Miss Clavering? I really couldn't say. So. Well, what happened? I don't know exactly. But shortly after you left, there was a knock at the door. And when you opened it, there stood a lady. Read that, Miss Clavering. It's round and flat and not a hat. But it carries a message for all of that. What is it? A jingle. But a most important jingle. I don't understand. Perhaps your playful captain will. He is fond of putting his thoughts in rhyme, is he not? Well, he shall have his fill, I promise you. You want to hurt him through me? I shall. You mean you intend to... Eliminate the meddling captain? Yes. Will I see him again? Perhaps. But do not think you can warn him. To do so would only end the matter quickly. I really couldn't say so. There was a roaring noise in my head like... like a train emerging from a tunnel. And then? And then I woke up. Where did you wake up, Tenny? Where? In a tulip bed. There was something in my hand. What was it? An envelope. An envelope? Yes, sir. Oh, come, Tenny. Do we have to search you? It, it might help, sir. Playing a joke. It must have backfired. Hello? Phyllis, darling, are you all right? Where are you? Listen carefully, Hugh. I can say what I'm going to only once. All right, darling, go ahead. It's round and flat and not a hat. But it carries a message for all of that. What? Say that again. Phyllis! Phyllis! She hung up. What did you say? Round and flat and not a hat, but it carries a message for all of that. Round and flat. It carries a message for all of that. Well, what is round and flat and not a hat that carries a message? Might be a gramophone record. Do you recognize the voice, Hugh Drummond? I am Irena Soldanis, widow of Carl Soldanis. You are the one person responsible for sending my husband to the scaffold. And now I am repaying you for the misery you have caused me. Phyllis Clavering is with me. 
You have until morning, Drummond, to find her. You can use your friend Longworth and that putty-faced servant of yours. But keep Colonel Nielsen and Scotland Yard out of it. You like games, don't you, Drummond? Then my game with you begins. Eight paces ahead, you'll find a clue. It's twisted and hanging plainly in sight. Eight paces ahead. I don't see anything twisted and hanging. Sounds like a rope. Mm, or a piece of cord. Mr. Longworth. Run time. Glad you're alive, old man. Exactly 40 miles from here, you'll find an inn where fishermen are lying. Perhaps Phyllis will be there. Exactly 40 miles from here, you'll find an inn where fishermen are lying. Exactly 40 miles. What can't be new showroom? You, try Drayminster. Drayminster? There you are. Drayminster, Sussex, population 2200. Hotel, the Angler's Rest. And fishermen will be lying at an Angler's Rest. It's an inn at Drayminster. Tenny, my gun. Yes, it's hard for me too, old boy. I'm coming too, sir. Good idea, Tenny. Yeah, I, I you. You, you, my baby's being christened you tomorrow. You need a baby. I'll name her for Phyllis. But I can't. She's a boy. What did the cellar, uh, Val... Val Dean? What did he look like? Well, about my height, very dark and wore thick spectacles. Thick ones, eh? Hmm. Anything like this? That's Val Dean. The gentleman's name is not Val Dean. And these reports, which came down on the express tonight from the yard, it appears that Mikhail Bagoris and some woman, possibly your friend Irena, are wanted in Paris for swindling an American millionaire and murdering him. Scotland Yard will handle this. You heard what Irena said about the police. You can't, don't you see? You really think you've played a game? No, as long as it amuses her. And you've got to keep out of it. All right, you go ahead and handle it your own way. Splendid. Your gun, sir. Goodbye, Colonel. Come on, Alfie, let's go. Scotland Yard. Colonel Nielsen speaking. Have Sanger meet me at... Do you know, my dear Sanger? I really think I should have been an actor. I was very good at amateur theatricals. Hmm. But I chose a less dangerous profession. Would you know me? I know your voice, Colonel Nielsen. Oh, I get me with belly jacket. That's capital, sir. Now remember, don't you and Grizzle follow me too closely. And don't come into the angler's rest until either I call you or do you see that I'm in trouble. Right, sir. Hey, every gent. Fifth time around, right? Right, here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, come on, Tenny, you're one of us. Oh, why the devil doesn't something happen? Captain Drummond told us to stay here. 
My mind is made up. All right, little guy. All right, Yaro. Captain Drummond, we meet again. Yes, I expected we would. Then you also probably expected another little poem. Yes, I... I yes. Here it is. What do I do next? That depends on your cleverness. What you've done once, do once again. Done once, do once again. Loud and bitter. They were sitting over there. Oh, that's it. Put out for a bit of air, sir. That heavy with ale they was. Then well, you better bring me some. Hi, Charlton. If you've done once, do once again. to make certain that you are keeping Colonel Nielsen out of this. You have been so clever in finding other people, Drummond. See if you can find Phyllis. Pay attention to this. In Limehouse, beneath the setting sun, you will find what sounds like the number one. Go inside, and the number three will bring you straight to me. Well, now, I never heard that before. You're going to again. I had you come to Angler's Rest to make certain you are keeping Colonel Nielsen out of this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, there you are. Jenny and I will... Never mind that. Read this. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> ABC, old fellow. Oh, please, Algie, be serious. Right you are. Limehouse District. Need what? Excellent. Pardon. I think I can help you, sir. Well, to begin with, I have a sister. Yes, Stanley? And she lives near Limehouse. Well, and I know the place like a book. Don't you think you're taking an unnecessary risk, Colonel Nielsen? <laughs> I rather like having this sort of thing, Sanger. Besides, I've got to watch you, Drummond. Can't Griswold and I take this case? Hmm, you don't know Hugh Drummond. He believes that he alone can save Miss Clavering. And he may be right. He's a fearless fool, you know. He caught Carl Soldanis, one of the most dangerous criminals I've ever known. And through Drummond, I hope to catch Irena Soldanis and Valdeen. Here, put this pillow under my coat, will you? Hmm? Huh? 
Shadow. The Sangilbones Cafe, matey. I smell trouble. Beneath the setting sun. Any your idea of disguise was a stroke of genius. I don't know like it, sir. No. W-O-N-1. O-N-E-1. The similarity of sound resulting from the different spellings of oriental and occidental words suggests material for an interesting thesis, what? Yes, and if you mix ideas like that with the clothes you're wearing, you'll get a knife in your gullet down here. Yes, sir. Your life wouldn't be worth tuppence. <laughs> don't you think, Dr. Tony Gwen? You know, our baby's being christened tomorrow. Oh, you'll be there, Algie. I hope. Huh? Be careful. Keep your eyes peeled for the number three. Come on. Right, Carl. She rises so right, and up she rises early in the morning. Oh, what, what shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. How's it easy, Mike? What are the arms? Mild and bitter. Same here. Same for me. Put him in the long boat till he's sober. Put him in the long boat till he's sober. Early in the morning. Oh, Ryan, right. and up she rises. Oh, Ryan, right. and up she rises. Oh, Ryan, and up she rises. Oh, Ryan, right, and up she rises. Oh, Ryan, 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 and up she rises. Oh, Tell me we're about down here. Oh, you was right, mighty. I am a stranger. Lonesome, too, I take it. Lonesome ain't a word for it, if you know what I mean. Come on, then. But unless you want to find her in the river, tell your pals to stay here. I'll meet you with my car. Don't you think I'd better? You heard what he said. That bloke looked like a murderer. Quite right, sir. But he said we would have stayed here. Those two lads mean well, but Drummond told them not to follow him. And he meant it. Kenny, my mind is made up. What a game, sir? Yes. Idea, Tenny. Here, take this. You may need it. Up to you, my friend. Well, don't you trust me? Like a bride. You are puzzled? Perhaps I can help you. Lively, lad. But I say, old fellow, come on out of it. And be thankful there's only room in jail for three of you. Back ah. there, Alden.
How easily you follow orders, Raman. What have you done to Phyllis? Is she all right? But of course. Would you like to hear her voice? Let me talk to her. Speak to him, my dear. You. Keep your chin up here. A pretty speech, Drummond. If Lady Macbeth isn't double-crossing us, we'll get out of this yet. But you've a long way to go before you find out whether I am double-crossing you or not. And then let's get on with it. The air in this place won't last forever. Be grateful that this time it is air. What am I to do next? I could kill you now or leave you here to die. But I've not finished with you. You will suffer just as much as my husband did when his life was taken away from him. Oh, tell him, please. You're wasting your time, Drummond. Below you is the Thames River. And I will... find the clue which is hidden below the line. Good job, Colonel. Well, I've been wanting to do that for an hour. Colonel Nielsen, do you think Irena Saldanis intends to release Miss Clavering? I'm afraid not. And if she suspects the police are on her trail, it'll mean the end of Phyllis. Do you think we can... I know we can get to rocking them alive before Drummond. After that... Who knows? One of the words is underscored with the line, but there's nothing below it except what I've just read. Let me see that again. Well, confound it, Kenny. Where did your sister have to go for that ale? Here I am now, sir. Uh, it's fine, Effie. It's because it's so late. That's why I was gone so long, sir. And do you know Curly Kills? <laughs> That's what I used to call Henry when he was a baby, sir. When I was coming up the stairs, there was the most peculiar old man, and he... A clue which is hidden below the line. Below the line. Perhaps this will give you an idea, sir. I could use one, Kenny. Oh, I'm stuck, LJ. I'm absolutely in the dark. May I see it, sir? Yes, Kenny. I think I have it, sir. Well, Kenny, what? An idea, sir. Effie, a match. Here's your match, sir. Curly Kim. <laughs> now, you observe, sir, I like the match. I placed the flame under the paper so. During the war, spies resorted to invisible ink. And I thought... thought that this might be one of the times. What does it say? Go back to Rockingham. She's giving us the runaround, Alfie. Maybe she isn't. I, I mean, we can't be sure until we're certain, can we? Either way, she's got a slash to the mast. But we'll beat her, Alfie. By Christopher, we'll beat her. Oh, that's where you found me, remember? Yes, Salzy, I remember. Confounded Drummond, why do you have to make so much noise? Hello, Colonel. Did anything happen while we were gone? Not here, at any rate. Why the disguise? Chase led to Limehouse. So you're back where you started from? Oh, yes, confound it. Think you'll hear from the lady again? Well, I'm trying to believe I will. Why doesn't something happen? Kenny! Yes, sir. Hello, hello? Yes, Gwen. Yes, he's here. Algy? Algy? No one will, will you? Sorry, old boy. But what happened? Gwen wants to talk to you. Gwen? Is she here? On the phone. Oh. Look, Gwen, darling? Uh, this is Algy Walgy. 
D did you miss me, sweet? Uh huh? Of course I do. But do you think he'll like being called Algy Walgy? Now, Bunny Wonder, you know he looks just like you. Let's call him Gwen. What? Oh, yes, yes, that's right. He is a boy, isn't he? If you were a girl, we'd call him Gwenny Wenny, wouldn't we? Pardon me, Gwen, but I'm expecting an important call. Bye. <coughs> Look here, old boy. You what? Nothing. I brung you something, sir. And if ever I ride in one of them there catches again, my name ain't Debbie Tennyson. I'll have it undone in a moment, sir. I tied it up. Keep your hands to yourself, will you? And I told the taxi man to hurry, but I didn't tell him to break my neck, which he almost did when he hit a bump. Oh, there it is, sir. <laughs> and the taxi fare come to one pound twelve and sixpence, it did. Pay him, Tony. Oh, he's paid, sir. But Curly Kins can give me the one pound twelve and sixpence. Where'd you get this? Why, just after you left and not come at the door. And when I opened it, there was a very polite gentleman what wore heavy spectacles. Oh, it's a gramophone record. Maybe we'll have some pretty music. Come on. I am going to let you see Phyllis within the next hour. She's very brave, Drummond. You should be proud of her. And perhaps she will be proud of you if you find the answer to a line from a certain volume of Wordsworth's poems. Go back to Angler's Rest. That woman's giving you the runaround, Hugh. Let me handle this, won't you? If the yard came into this, she would kill Phyllis. No, Colonel. She reigned his game, and we've got to play it her way, as long as we know Phyllis is alive. See you later, Colonel. What's it all about, sir? That's what I intend to find out. Well, this would have to happen. Tools, Sonny. Yeah, hold this. Gentlemen, may I suggest that you raise your hands, please? Thank you. It's your trick, allies. And you are vulnerable. What do we do next? Uh, you, Mr. Longworth, take the captain's gun, please. What would I say? You do as he says, Elsie. Uh, it isn't cricket. It isn't far from it. Drop it. Hands up again, please. Thank you. This way, Captain Drummond. See you later, Elsie. Well, uh, you are very optimistic, my friend. Oh, also, uh, may I warn you that to fire after my car, as you intend to do, will result only in the sudden elimination of Captain Drummond. Thank you. I see that you understand. After you, my friend. I shall have to lower my hands. Please be certain that is all that you do. We meet again, what? That's what? The night is full of surprises. Yes. And the night is still young. Good evening. Ah, Lady Macbeth. With you as ever, Drummond. But I am not walking in my sleep. And here is Phyllis, too. Hello, darling. Hello, Hugh. Chin up. Right. Uh, face uh, forward, please, Captain. Hugh. Yes, darling. Is Greyminster the fifth or sixth most beautiful village in England? Does it make much difference? That depends. Well, then I'll remember it. It's important. Is that all you can tell me? If she tries to tell you more, it will be most unfortunate. Sayuli, what she's told you to, darling. 
you catch on quickly, Drummond. And now, my friend, you better say goodbye to Phyllis. What again? Uh, you uh, may stop now. Uh, good hunting, sir. Bye, darling. Don't worry. Here we are, sir. Tenny, I came along on the tank rack just in case. A oh, brilliant idea, Tenny. I'd rather like it, though. That should be Mr. Longworth. What happened? I thought, Phyllis. Yeah? Listen up, Lord, I saw the thing. Right, go on. Have you got a book of Wordsworth poems? Poems? Yes, poems. Rhymes. Is he all right? I don't blame you for thinking I'm crazy, but I'm looking for a book of poems by Wordsworth. Do you understand? What's your name, sir? Drummond. Captain U.C. Drummond. Then why didn't you say so? This here was left for you by a gentleman. With spectacles? Aye, and everyone's too. Anything's liable to happen. Have the boys stand by with a car. Very well, Colonel Milton. William, sitting on the... No, oh, William. Captain Drummond. Oh, for bitter. Right, Joe. I wonder if there's anything in that basket. Do you know Wordsworth? Jose. What do you got in the basket? Fish. I'll oh, give me another bitter. Balm, if you ask me. Captain Drummond. Yes, Timmy? While you were investigating the fish, I found this. The mere. Landlord! Well, gents, what'll it be? Is there a place around here called the mere? Aye. Are you sure? Go on, go on. We're doing 50. Get round it. There's a ditch on this side. Over here, too. We could hitch up the tow rope and pull it off. It'll take too long. It's only half a mile further. Come ahead. Algy. What? Don't forget to call Gwen when we get back. If we get back.
Let me open up. I open it. What again? Come on, hurry up. Looks like a valley torture chamber. This must have been where the murdered man kept his dog. Maybe we better go quiet. Elsie is dreaming to the fifth or sixth most beautiful village in England. Do you think this is the right time to be discussing the relative beauty of villages, Hugh? Phyllis asked me that question in the car. I can't see what difference it makes. From what Irena said, it might make quite a lot. They wrote that little message between the fifth and sixth rings. Then the rings must have something to do with it. But wait, Elsie! If we choose the wrong one... The lady or the tiger, huh? Or the end of all of us. Oh. What are you doing? Never mind, pull that light out. Stand back, Algy. Nearly missed the christening that time, Algie. One year ago today, you caused my husband's death. This is the last act, I take it. Yes, you are right, Raman. I don't suppose I could strike a bargain with you. A bargain? Yes, for Miss Clavering and Mr. Longworth. After all, they're only innocent bystanders. It was my plan for the first that you and Miss Clavering should go together. If Mr. Longworth happens to be with you, that's his affair. And now I want you to be quiet. And listen very, very carefully. Do you hear it, Drummond? Yes, I understand. The climax of your jolly little game is a trip to Kingdom Come when this infernal machine goes off. Is that right? That was Mikhail's idea. You seem to have thought of everything. We will keep them company if we do not get out of here. Come.
much longer do you think it will be? Until the place is filled with gas, I suppose. And then it will blow up. That's it. I wish Gwen were here. I mean, I wish I could call her. Yeah, let's try wishing that door was open. <clears throat> Hugh, take it away, take it away, take it away. Would you have gone for your honeymoon? Captain Drummond! Captain Drummond! Stay here. Yes, honey, here we are. I, are you there, sir? Unlock the door. I can't, sir. There's no key here. Now listen carefully, Kenny. Are the pins on the hinges? Oh, yes, sir. There are pins. Well, pull them out. Sir, they're rusted in. Kenny, have you got a gun? Yes, sir. Now, Kenny, do exactly as I tell you. Yes, sir. Put the muzzle of the gun under the top pin. It's there, sir. Now, I'll pull the trigger. It worked, sir. Good. Now the bottom one. Get ready. Come on. Penny! Yes, sir. The place is going to blow up any minute. Get out while you have a chance. I'm sorry, sir. I can't hear you, sir. impair a profile that has endured this long, would you? I might have known, but you didn't. Well, Irena got away. Oh, no, she didn't. She and Valdine are in my car. And when I'm through with them, they'll be on their way to Paris to stand trial for murder. Good work, Colonel. I think I'll think now. Oh, don't, darling. Wait until we're married. Sonny, <laughs> I gave you the license, didn't I? Yes, sir. I, I have it here, sir. 